Hey YouTube, Why Paints here. This will be my step-by-step -step guide in painting Doctor Doom by C27 to a tabletop standard. While I love this hobby, I don't always want to spend 10 hours or more on a single mini. Sometimes I just need to get some figures painted so I can enjoy the game. I can't be the only one with boxes and boxes of unpainted figs just waiting to be loved and used. So I decided to do a guide on painting a figure in about an hour. One key tool to help us do this is a hair dryer. I use this to speed up the drying time between colors. You could also use a small fan for this, but a bit of heat will speed this up a lot. Hopefully through this series, I'll be able to get through a lot of my backlog and watching will help you get through yours. To start, I've primed the figure and base in black to give me a good starting point. First, let's tackle the base. Looking at it, the base is mostly stone with a couple of wood planks, so I gave it a base coat of Vallejo Cold Gray. There's not too much thinking in this step, just get the paint on the plastic. I don't even bother trying to avoid the planks as the gray base will make it easier to paint the brown later. Usually, when you put down a base coat, you want a fully opaque coverage, but I feel when painting stone, having variation of the color tones is key to making it really look like a rock. So having a couple of thin spots here and there where the black primer can be seen will just save us a bit of time and sell the look a bit better. Next, I put a quick streak of P3 bootstrap brown on the blanks of wood. Because Doom will be standing mostly in front of these and his cape will be blocking most of the side lights to him, I don't want to spend too much time on this trying to make them look perfect, so the plan is get the brown down and move on. Since the stone wall on the back side will be visible and is mostly intact blocks, I gave it an extra coat of the cold gray to better refine the look. A quick dry under the blower and we're ready to wash with Citadel Ellen Oil. I started with the lining wash only in the cracks of the back wall. Again, since this is going to be seen, it's worth the extra time to keep it as clean as possible. While the inside wall got a less clean but faster version of this. For the rest of the base, since it would be mostly covered and it's made of ruin and broken stone, an all over wash will do the heavy lifting and save us a bunch of time. After the wash dried, I went back with a cold gray dry brush to bring up the color I want on the stones and be able to kill the shadows where they shouldn't be. Given the planks a light dry brush of this as well, I'm trying to sell the idea that some of the stone dust has settled on top of the wood while also saving time. Thankfully, dry brushing takes very little time to dry and we can move on to the next step of a highlight. For this, I'm using Vallejo Stonewall Gray. Again, starting with the back wall, I did a quick edge highlight across the top edges of each block. Always remember, this step makes the model look worse until you finish them all and tie them together. On the rest, I picked out a few places to do this edge highlight while keeping in mind how much of the base is really going to be visible underneath Doom and his cape. So there are better places to spend this time. With that, I'm calling the base ton, time to move on. Working inside out, I started with an overbrush of Army Painter Shiny Silver. I like doing an overbrush when doing metallics as the black showing through really sells the look of a raw metal for me like a pig iron, and it saves a ton of time over trying to pull off a non-metal metallic, or NMM, which sadly to say, I'm very bad at and need to practice more. Thankfully, I'm more than happy with the results I get from this method. I will say, this method does make it hard to get deep in the recesses, so a bit of brush poking was needed. Sorry brush. Next comes a quick null and oil wash to add definition that we like to see in any armor as it gets those seams super dark and will make the flat areas really pop in the next set. 
Not much to say here, just get it on to make sure it doesn't pool in a flat areas, only in the cracks. Heavy washes like this tend to take a bit longer to dry, so this is where the hair dryer's heat really comes in handy. Next, using a stiff brush, I dry brush some of that shiny silver back on, focusing on the high points, flat areas, and surfaces that face upward. Be sure to get his face as well to give it a bit more definition. Next to painter is robes. Using gunship green, I slap down a coat while avoiding the armor. I used my big brush for most of this and only switched to a smaller one as I got into the detail areas. Doing this can save a lot of time, but be careful you're not too zealous as you don't want to mess up your earlier work. At this point, I hit the 45 minute mark and decided to forego a wash and jump straight to a highlight with Vallejo Goblin Green. I thinned this down almost to a glaze and then kept my brush perpendicular to the fold, similar to a dry brush. This way, the highlight is very subtle, which I like for fabrics. And most importantly, it saves time. I also went in with a detail brush to highlight his chest, hood, and skirt with the same color. Again, keeping the highlights subtle and the time commitment low. Closing in on the finish line, I grab my bootstrap brown to paint his belt. Not much to say here other than stay focused so that you can paint clean. Spending a bit of time to not mess up your previous steps is a good time investment. There is a saying that goes, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. In essence, there's no bigger time save than doing it right the first time. Since I can shade the browns and the golds using the same wash, I decided to go ahead and paint all the gold details using Sycorax bronze. Here's where I made a brain fart choice and painted his buckle as a square. Don't do as I do. Your belt buckle should be shaped like a backward C. I was watching my clock as it crossed the one hour line and just bjorked this up. Lastly, a quick wash of our browns and golds with the sepia shade and Doom is ready to hit the table. From here, you can spend some more time adding highlights and extra details if you like. But for me, since this figure is going to be seeing battle, I don't think he should be too fancy. I want to thank you for watching my video to the end. If you liked it and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out and let me know that you want to see more of this kind of hobby content. And with that, peace and chicken grease, and I'll catch you next time.